topic for discussion today is pneumonia. Pneumonia is a condition where the alveolus is usually filled with fluid. Okay, the fluid filled with air spaces will thus diminish uh, the actually oxygen exchange capacity from the within the bloodstream. I mean, from the blood and uh, to external environment, the oxygen exchanging capacity has been reduced because of the fluid filled spaces within the alveolus. This is the main uh, feature of pneumonia. So now we'll discuss more about pneumonia in detail. Normally, it is an acute respiratory illness which is characterized by radiological pulmonary shadowing, which is either a segmental lobar or multi lobar, uh, lobar based on the region involved. Normally, it is again classified into a community or hospital acquired and pneumonia in immune compromised patients. Here this is a picture which is actually showing normal alveoli and pneumonia, uh, alveoli which is affected with pneumonia. Here we can see the alveolus are, usually, are filled with the fluid here. It is Hence what happens is there will not have uh, gaseous exchange between the bloodstream and the external environment will not be possible, will not be more efficient as, as seen in normal alveoli, will not be as efficient as that seen in normal alveoli in case of pneumonia. Normally, this pneumonia, based on the region which is involved, it can be divided into lobar pneumonia, bronchopneumonia. Lobar pneumonia, in this, it is a homogeneous consolidation which involving one or more lungs, uh, more lobes of lung, that, and resulting in pleural inflammation. When it is coming to bronchopneumonia, there will be patchy alveolar consolidation which is associated with bronchial and bronchiolar inflammation that is seen in bronchopneumonia. Coming to the stages of inflammation in case of pneumonia, what happens is in lobar pneumonia especially, initially it will have a congestion phase which will later uh, become into red hepatization followed by grey hepatization and it will resolve. What is this red hepatization? On the cut surface of the affected lobe, fibrin forms, there will be fibrin which forms a, uh, fibrin is formed which will resemble a liver. In case of grey hepatization, this will convert into a color, slowly appear as grey in color. Later what happens is in the process of clearance and repair, this will be removed off, this will be cleared off and the normal lung architecture is been restored. Coming to the predisposing factors, most common uh, feature or most common factor that has been associated with pneumonia is smoking. May it be active smoking or passive smoking. Cigarette smoking, alcohol consumption, indoor air pollution, old age, upper respiratory tract infection, viruses such as flu and HIV, that is influenza virus or HIV, old age, patients with, who are having any pre-existing lung disorders and patients who are on steroid therapy are common risk factors or these are the common risk factors associated with pneumonia. Let us talk about community acquired pneumonia. Community acquired pneumonia is usually called as old man's friend because old people are not commonly involved. It affects usually commonly affects the children. And it is through droplet infection again. Uh, most common causative organism is uh, streptococcus pneumonia. Also various other viral infections such as flu and measles, HSV, valsella joster, cytomegalovirus, coronavirus, adenovirus are commonly associated with this pneumonia. Normally there is some condition called as atypical pneumonia also where the actual causative organism or actual causative factor is not known. Uh, it is an atypical pneumonia. And mycoplasm pneumonia is usually uh, seen in young people. Uh, Haemophilus influenza is commonly seen in elderly age group. Normally, Ligonella uh, pneumophilia, it is also uh, local outbreaks are seen in these cases. And we have uh, travel. Travelers are usually the common uh, etiology for spreading the illness from one place to one endemic region to other region. Travelers usually spread illness. And coming to clinical features, most common clinical features are figure, rigors. Fever, rigors, they will have shivering, malaise, delirium can be seen, there will be loss of appetite. Patients usually complain of headache and the, there will be persistent cough which initially is of shorter duration in time and which is painful, dry. Later it will be mucopurulent and there will be half sputum. And streptococcus pneumonia, there will be rust colored sputum and hemoptysis can also be seen in these cases. Coming to uh, the other characters, characters, it includes pleural chest pain. This pleural chest pain will be referring to from uh, to shoulder or anterior abdominal wall. This is again a pathognomic feature where the pleuritic chest pain is being referred to a shoulder or the anterior abdominal wall. Upper abdominal tenderness can be seen with low, uh, especially in patients with lower lobar pneumonia and they will also uh, probably with hepatitis can also be seen in this condition. On examination there can be increased pulse and respiratory rate. Lower B, low BP can be seen and patients may also uh, manifest delirium. 
sometimes pyrexia and low oxygen saturation can also be seen in these cases. Coming to the chest signs, in, in consolidation what happens is there will be dull to percussion and percussion into dull sounds are seen. There will be enhanced sound conduction, bronchial breathing and whispering uh, pectoral liquid can be seen and crackles can also be heard in, in these cases. And herpes labialis, it actually points to the streptococcal uh, infection. If there is patient is having herpes labialis, then we can think about any streptococcal infection. Poor dental hygiene, especially Klebsiella and Actinomyces is really can be seen in case of patients with uh, poor dental hygiene. Coming to the main symptoms of infectious pneumonia, <clears throat> it also has systemic manifestations and most common features are high fever, chills are the, are the pathognomic features. Patients will have clamminess, blueness because of uh, decreased oxygen circulation within the body. Lungs, they will be having cuff with sputum or phlegm and there will be shortness of breath. Pleuritic chest pain can be seen, hemoptysis can be seen in these cases. Muscular uh, symptoms include fatigue, aches that is myalgia can be seen and central nervous system or central uh, manifestations include headache. Patients will have uh, loss of appetite, mood swings, low blood, blood pressure, patients will have nausea, vomiting and joint pains, arthritis can also be seen in these cases. And investigation, coming to investigation, complete blood picture can, uh, will help us in evaluating the case. We can have either very high or low leukocytes, neutrophil leukocytosis, especially bacterial etiology can be seen. Uh, hemolytic anemia uh, is one of the features associated with this. And especially urea, if it is greater than 7 millimoles per ml. Uh, and uh, hyponatremia is other investigative features for this. Bacteremia, abnormal liver function test, especially hypoalbuminemia can be seen. Cold agglutinins are usually present in these cases where uh, they are present positive and sputum will, will be positive for mycobacterium. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, sputum will be positive for the causative bacteria, especially gram staining, culture, uh, antimicrobial sensitivity testing will be helpful. PCR for swab can also be done and uh, this will be helpful in identifying the DNA of the causative organism. Urine analysis for pneumococcal or uh, Ligionella antigen can also be seen. Now the chest x-ray, coming to chest x-ray, if lobar pneumonia is present, then there will be patchy or pacifications with air bronchograms and in case of bronchopneumonia, there will be patchy and segmental shadowing can be seen. Pleural fluid culture can also be done, especially this fluid can be collected with the help of ultrasound and guided aspiration. Now coming to the management of uh, patients who are suffering from pneumonia, uh, maintenance of the partial oxygen that is up to uh, 8 kilopascals and fluid balance, fluid electrolyte balance. Various antibiotics can be used in these conditions, whereas especially in the uncomplicated cases, amoxicillin 500 mg uh, thrice daily for 3 days, clarithromycin can be given 500 mg twice daily. In case of complicated cases, clarithromycin can be given 500 mg IV and chloamoxiclor can be given uh, 1.2 g thrice daily. It also can be given in IV. Now coming to hospital acquired pneumonia, <clears throat> it is usually seen in case of health workers or attendants who are in close uh, uh, you know, approach to the patients who are being hospitalized, also called as nosocomial uh, pneumonia. It is actually a new episode of pneumonia, usually seen two days after hospital, administ uh, after hospital admission. Even the patient who is not actually suffering from pneumonia can get this uh, pneumonia after being hospitalized, uh, hospitalized, especially after two days after hospitalization. And they can uh, manifest as nosocomial infection that is hospital acquired pneumonia. Usually elderly age group patients, immunocompromised children, mechanically ventilated patients are most commonly uh, are most common uh, risk factors. You know these patients are uh, more prone for this uh, hospital acquired pneumonia. Even healthcare uh, as professionals associated healthcare associated pneumonia is also seen. Usually healthcare workers or healthcare professionals who are in close proximity to Patients who are <clears throat> actually suffering from pneumonia and other diseases can also acquire this hospital acquired pneumonia. Then in coming to clinical features, usually they have purulent sputum and endotracheal secretions can also be seen. New radiological infiltrates can be seen. There will be increase in oxygen requirement. Patient usually gasps, they are hyperventilated. Leukocytosis and leukopenia can be seen in these cases and it usually needs a microbial confirmation before confirming it is a hospital acquired pneumonia. We need a microbial confirmation for that. Full blood count, uh, urea, electrolytes, ESR and C-reactive protein can, uh, will also be helpful. In ventilated patients, bronchoscopy directed protected brush specimens, bronchoalveolar lavish, endotracheal aspirates will be helpful in uh, diagnosis. Coming to the management, because we know there is decreased oxygen supply, decreased oxygen exchange 
uh, in these cases so adequate oxygenation has to be done external oxygen has to be given to the patient fluid balance has to be maintained antibiotics example coamoxiclav cefuroxamine and peperacillin and tazobactam can be given overall prevention is better in this case what happens is good hygiene hand washing monitoring risk of aspiration decontamination of medical equipment will be helpful in preventing this hospital acquired uh, pneumonia <clears throat> coming to superative pneumonia in this superative pneumonia what happens is there is destruction of lung parenchyma by inflammation and micro abscess formation there can be this can further lead to pulmonary abscess where the lesions of a large localized collection of pus can be seen it is because of inhalation of septic material this separated pneumonia or pulmonary abscess can be uh, can are more commonly manifested a non infective form of aspiration pneumonia is also seen uh, which is because of exogenous lipid pneumonia it can be either because of animal vegetable or mineral oils it is because of aspiration of exogenous lipid material which can in the form of mineral oil or any vegetable oil the radiographic features here we can see homogeneous lobal or segmental opacification consolidation or collapse can be seen here abscess will be seen abscess will further uh, cause cavitation and there can we can in the radiograph you can also see the uh, fluid level changes can also be seen <clears throat> coming to the treatment iv coamoxiclav for 1.2 grams three times daily can be given oral metronidazole 400 mg thrice daily uh, three times daily can also be given then you can also have cmrsa um, uh, that is oral non beta for cmrsa we can give oral non beta lactam antibiotics such as tamivir and sulfamethoxazole treatment for about 4 to 6 weeks period of care period is seen in case of lung abscess so in case of lung abscess a long term treatment is usually taken care in immuno compromised patients especially with patients who are on prolonged drug users or who have been affected with hiv aids in those cases also we can see pneumonia opportunistic pathogens will actually such as gram negative bacteria pseudomonas originosa virus fungi and mycobacterium these pathogens will uh, result in pneumonia and uh, the common manifestations include fever cough and breathlessness due to defective phagocytic function there will be cell mediated immunity and antibody production coming to diagnosis of this we can do bronchoscopy uh, and we can also do trans bronchial biopsy and surgical lung biopsy and we can also high resolution ct will be helpful in identifying any focal unilateral air space opacifications any cavitations or any hallucine opacification especially seen in case of aspergillosis and pleural effusion these all findings can be seen in ct and it will be of diagnostic value coming to the empirical treatment <clears throat> normally empirical treatment in this broad spectrum antibiotic therapy usually third generation cephalosporins or quinolones are given in this cases and penicillin plus amino glycosides can also be given antiviral and antifungal therapy is needed i mean can be given if needed in case of any need even anti uh, viral and antifungal therapy can also be given so this is all about pneumonia and we will go into next topic that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease nothing but copd copd is a chronic condition as the name itself indicates it's a chronic condition it is characterized by progressive persistent air flow limitation there will be persistent air flow limitation with enhanced chronic inflammatory response in the airways and lungs to any noxious stimuli various risk factors are present for copd and the primary important or primary one is cigarette smoking it also counts for amount of duration it minimum 10 pack years are required that is one pack daily for 10 years that is called one pack year is nothing but one pack daily for one year is called as one pack year so 10 such pack years are necessary for uh, are usually uh, can lead into copd that is chronic obstructive obstructive pulmonary disorder where there will be persistent air flow limitation so this is a picture which is showing normal lungs and lungs with copd in lungs with copd we can actually see the walls of the alveoli are being destroyed okay here the walls of are, are being destroyed and they are forming uh, you know uh, <clears throat> there fewer uh, alveoli can be seen here because there will be decreased gases exchange in case of patients with lungs with copd air flow limitation is because of premature airway closure in this premature airway closure is by gas entrapment or by hyperinflation it can be because of entrapment of gas gaseous structure there or hyperinflation which will actually decrease the chest wall and pulmonary compliance pulmonary inflation 
will thus lead to flattening of the diaphragmatic vessels and there will be horizontal alignment of intercostal muscles thus they cause more respiratory uh, the mus respiratory muscles are mo at more stress and this requires more amount of uh, you know patients need more energy to take in breathing so they take breathing with difficulty and emphysema is a condition where there will be centri acinar para acinar paraseptal and bulle there will be impaired gaseous exchange and respiratory failure in cases of this emphysema Coming to clinical features of uh, COPD, various symptoms of COPD, usually patients will have tiredness because they have to gasp for breathing, they will have weight loss and they have cough, they will have shortness of breathing and they will be wheezing also, they have a on auscultation, COPD has a particular wheezing sound just like asthma, they have chest tightness and ankles also there will be swelling because of secondary heart failure in case of COPD and it is usually seen in page group of greater than 40 years. Chronic bronchitis or breathlessness can be seen. There will be cough, sputum production and this is called a smoker's cough because patients usually have a history of smoking. Hemoptysis can be seen in case of exacerbated COPD where there will be coughing of blood. MRC dyspnea scale, when, when we take an MRC dyspnea scale, patients usually <coughs> have a uh, dis, I mean, grading of this dyspnea based on the uh, difficulty of uh, breathing, based on difficulty of intake of breath, dyspnea scale uh, can be graded and morning headaches can be seen like hypercapnia. Physical signs are usually not specific, patients usually are uh, phenotypes are present like pink puffers and blue bloaters, this is a pathognomic feature of COPD again. The BMI can be a prognostic feature. If there is patient is having excessive BMI, then uh, prognosis is less. And pitting edema can be seen in corpulmonary. This is because of secondary uh, uh, secondary heart involvement. Usually because of secondary heart failure. In these cases, we can see pitting edema in corpulmonary. Crackle sound can be seen here heard on auscultation, which can be accompanied with infection or bronchiectasis. Breath sounds are usually quiet in these cases. Coming to the investigations, there are no reliable radiographic findings. Usually, COPD is a clinical feature and chest x-ray can only be useful in alternative diagnosis that is to exclude other conditions similar to that of COPD. <clears throat> a complete black picture and basal emphysema, alpha 1 antiproteinase can be helpful in diagnosis. Spirometer will show airflow obstruction and lung volume measurement is one again useful uh, diagnostic feature in case of COPD. HRCT, that is high resolution uh, CT, will show a pacification of the emphysemas if there are any. And coming to the management, first thing is reducing exposure to noxious stimuli. A patient is asked to quit smoking immediately and also protect themselves from any passive smoking and any other noxious gases. Bronchodilators are usually given in these cases like beta 2 agonist, salmeterol, formeterol and in indaketerol. Oral bronchodilator therapy can be given with the help of theophylline or bambuterol. Corticosteroids, oral corticosteroids are very useful in case of uh, COPDs. Pulmonary rehabilitation can be done where exercise, physical education, nutritional counseling and physical training will be helpful in case of this COPD. Oxygen therapy and surgical intervention will also be helpful in especially bullectomy. Other measures can be useful such as annual influenza vaccination, uh, uh, mucolytic therapy and antioxidants will be helpful in preventing acute or exacerbations of this COPDs. So this is about COPD, the uh, clinical features of COPD, how it is actually been diagnosed and various investigative procedures for COPD and management protocol for the treatment of COPD. Thank you.